communities on how they can share their services and how we can learn from each other. Lake will pose questions and I invite you to give us some input if you can and then Dana will summarize this conversation. Thanks. Let's give a round of applause. She's very much talking in front of the Thank you, Mayor, for that. And I don't know about the rest of you, but after sitting on those chairs for a bit, I get a little touch of TV, tired butt. <laughs> so, how many Norwegians in the audience? Norwegians, raise your hand. Okay, everybody stand up real quick. Us Norwegians' responsibility is to teach those poor non Norwegians the Norwegian cheer. Everybody ready now? Watch me real carefully. It's real complicated. Okay, you ready? Clap your hands, clap your feet, we're number one. <laughs> All right, thank you. I want to thank Lana for inviting me to participate today. Forgive my familiarity that I don't call her doctor, but she and I did go to college together a few years ago. I'm way older than she is. That's many years older. So anyway, it's a pleasure to be here. You and these students, raise your hand. Ah, here on a Saturday morning, you must need the extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have found me here on a Saturday morning. <laughs> uh, my name is Blake Crosby. I'm the brand new Executive Director of the North Coast League of Cities. I've been on board since January 6th, so I'm still on a fairly steep learning curve. I would be remiss if I did not tell you a little bit about what the North Coast League of Cities does. We represent all the cities in North Dakota and the park districts. There's 357 cities, 200 and some park districts, and primarily we have four major functions. Politics. We represent the cities and the park districts on the state and federal level when it comes to legislative issues. And unfortunately, right now I'm up to my years in property taxes, and property tax reform and taxation. So I know way more about property taxes than I ever wanted to know but don't ask me afterwards. It's not a good topic. We also have a Municipal Government Academy where we provide training for elected and appointed officials. Now just think about that for a second. There's no college major that is called mayor or city auditor. Those people are coming into the job. There's a huge responsibility for those tasks. We provide some of that training for those cities. We don't have villages in North Dakota, we don't have municipalities, we don't have boroughs. The legislature passed a law quite some years ago that everybody is called a city. So, across the board. We have a number of communication devices that we use. The big one is CityScan. We publish that on a monthly basis. It provides some training opportunities, some uh, information on upcoming training opportunities, it provides some basic information and it uh, helps that communication gap between us and my customers. I come out of private business, so you'll hear me talk <coughs> in terms of cities and park district being my customer. That's the terminology that I use. The other thing we provide is we have a full-time attorney on staff. His name is Jerry. Jerry is undoubtedly the best municipal attorney in the state. He's got 33 years of experience doing it. He knows every statute, every code, every ordinance. We have a listserv where elected and appointed officials, if they're on it, can email in questions, or of course they can use a telephone and call in questions that might have to do with zoning, might have to do with ballots, might have to do with voting, mm -hmm. um, and everything in between. The jury's responsibility is to address those questions because there's a legal context to those questions. And it's important that as cities proceed forward, they do it in an appropriate manner. So, if I sniffle a bit up here today, excuse me, my allergies seem to be going crazy with the winter that never seems to end. The other thing that I remember from Anna is that she's a taskmaster. Keep things going. So, here's how this is going to work for the next little while. I'm going to introduce our panel up here. There's a series of three questions that I'm going to give them and they have the questions on a piece of paper. I'm going to give each of them a chance to address those questions after I've introduced them. 
And when I introduce them, I'm also going to give you a rough idea of the city size they come from. Keep in mind that over half the cities in North Dakota, and there's 357 of them, have a population of less than 200. Keep that in mind. Okay, with that, let me pull this out of here without hurting myself. There we go. First on the table here we have Richard Comer. He's the mayor of Cheyenne, population of approximately 200. Dan Hanneman next to him. And Moreno, mayor, you've already met him, population a little over 400. Ed Palakowski from Lakota, population of about 700. Paul Clay from Halak, population of about 1,000. Russ McDonald, who's chair of the Spirit Lake Tribe, they have about 6,700 enrolled members. Mike Brown, mayor from Grand Forks, about 55,000 in population. And last but certainly not least, Dana Harshall from the poli -Sci department at UND. So with that, here are the three questions. How does your community collaborate with other communities? What are some of the untapped potentials for collaboration between communities? And what roadblocks do you see to collaboration between communities? Now, I want to warn everybody up here in front, you're all mayors and you're used to talking a lot. I've got a stopwatch, you only got five to seven, excuse me, this first one you only got five minutes. So I'm going to give you a one minute warning. You're all used to that. So with that, Richard, you're on deck. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I've been the mayor of Cheyenne for four years now. Uh, we are 80 County, North Dakota. Is, I think the smallest county in the state. Yeah, it consists of two towns, uh, New Rockford and Cheyenne. Um, our communities, uh, in the relationship with uh, that we have with uh, New Rockford, we share a lot of things together, and um, we have like uh, sporting events. Um, Public events, celebrations. We have we have a uh, our old school in China is closed down. It closed about six years ago, I guess. But uh, we were able to uh, turn it into a lodge. It's called Open Season Lodge <coughs> and uh, Event Center. So we have a lot of events. Uh, we use the gym a lot <coughs> and. <clears throat> you recently had the uh, uh, Rockford Cheyenne High School prom there. That's the first year uh, that the gym there has been used for that. And we're glad to see that come. But um, in the, uh, like the ambulance service, uh, fire department, uh, we have EMTs in both communities that help out on the uh, ambulance. Uh, calls and also the, the fire department they uh, they train together um, we're uh, getting ready to have uh, you know the fourth of july celebration we it's quite a an event in shine and we have uh, at the henderson park we normally have a rodeo um, uh, Demolition Derby, and then this year we're having a uh, it's going to be an all-day event there. It'll be uh, a dance after the after the uh, demolition derby, and we'll have people there from all over the county, I guess. But uh, that's just some things we're doing in Cheyenne, and the second. Second uh, question is, uh, I think uh, advertisement is a uh, is a thing that um, needs to be worked on. Social media needs to be used more. Uh, newspaper, word of mouth, you know, people. general conversation they should pass on the information that way and uh, some of the roadblocks to 
is used on a lot of uh, like lack of volunteers, lack of funds, um, housing. We don't have enough housing to uh, accommodate people that want to come to China. And, um, um, we just, you know, we need to have more fundraisers and. Basically, what's going on in China? Do I have anybody have a question? We're gonna we're gonna go all the way down the line, and then we're gonna open up the floor to some questions for okay. individual members. So, thank you, Mayor. Dan, we're gonna wrap up. Right well, I'm Mayor Henry from um, Slam Radio. Here. Um, I don't have as much information as that to go over, but collaboration between communities we, we do collaborate quite a bit with other communities some of the examples would be our software that we're presently using for for running the city that was uh, helpful between us and, and Laramore looking at what they did also some of the new things that we're looking at is changing our water meters and the talking with Laramore and other other cities on that um, at present time there's not much going on in the city uh, as far as development, but there's ongoing concerns with trade accords and such like that to, to work on. Um, I guess uh, collaborate, you know, um, communication with, with other communities. Jerry from the League of Cities, but it's not a community, but it's a community to us. We've been using the League of Cities for many, many years uh, to help us make sure that we're on the straight and narrow, and I can't thank the League of Cities enough for that, for participating and, and being members of the League of Cities, because it, it really has uh, helped our community uh, keep down costs and, and to keep us going in the straight and narrow, so it, it's really helped us. Um, roadblocks, I, I think roadblocks as far as collaborating with other communities such as road work or, or things. If you're touching communities, it's, it's easy to get that collaboration done and, and cost. If you're outside of those communities, it's hard to, to take those dollars and, and stretch them across where you're not gonna go into other, other things. But dollars is, is also a concern all the time, is, is that. Volunteers, Rhonda can uh, really contest a lot of volunteers. But uh, volunteers is always welcome for, for any project. And, uh, but with that, I'll turn it over. <laughs> My name is Ed Polakowski. I'm the mayor of Lakota. Um, currently, we're collaborating with a few communities in the area, uh, Michigan, North Dakota being one, on some different projects and everything. I know in the past, um, uh, Lakota had a youth council and so did Mayor Brown have a youth council and we got together the youth councils and they discussed, discussed current issues uh, that Grand Forks was having and uh, Lakota was having so that was kind of a nice deal there. Uh, we found out there were some differences as far as the way um, their youth council was, was performing different things than ours was. Um, I'll give you an example. We had uh, our youth council went and uh, they had a Senior versus senior day. They went down to the nursing home and played we with the senior citizens down there. Um, they also had a, uh, a bonfire in the, the school year. We put that together for them. The kids actually did that. Um, they had dances. Um, we had a, a movie and a supper in the park for the beginning of school one year. So that that kind of um, was kind of neat. Uh, we also. Um, are collaborating with Michigan, North Dakota. We had the first annual Duck Fest this past year, where what we did was we sold ducks for $25 a piece, and all our families and businesses sponsored those, and they actually painted them up. You know, the, the, they got artists or kids or whoever to paint these ducks up. And then uh, last November, or October, we had an auction, and what we did was we wanted this money that we raised during this auction to be split between the Michigan Library and the Lakota Library because we're planning on doing res renovations for both. And I was kind of shocked because I figured we'd start out with 48 ducks 
you know, and do 24 per community. Well, we ended up buying another 48, so we had 96 ducks to auction off. We ended up raising $10,000, and we split that money, so now we have $5,000 per library. So I thought that was kind of a big success. We're going to do, try doing that about every two years. Uh, some of the untapped potentials for collaboration. Um, it, communications. Um, the reason I did Duck Fest was to kind of get both communities together. Because at one time it was a pretty big rivalry with the high schools, you know. So now it's, it's to the point where people in Michigan and people in Lakota are starting to talk about what they're going to do with their ducks the following, you know, next year. So I think that's, that's a, a, um, one of the uh, roadblocks is just getting people to talk. I mean, you have to have an icebreaker of some sort to get the communities together. And Duff effects worked really well, you know. <clears throat> also other roadblocks. And I agree with uh, the two mayors before me. Uh, economics and resources. Uh, Michigan has one person working for the city. We have three. So I'm hoping in the future that we can actually put our resources together and take care of both cities. I guess that's all I have. Thank you. I'm Paul Clay. I'm the mayor of Halleck, Minnesota. For those that don't know, Halleck is up in the very northwest corner of Minnesota. We're it's located about 12, 14 miles from the Red River, about 20 miles south of the Canadian border. So we're the end of the line as far as uh, going that way, but we're the gateway of the whole area by coming in this way. Um, we work a lot with, um, we've got a, a city crew, maintenance crew of four people. And as far as collaborating with other communities, it kind of, if you want to say bottom up, um, from the city crew to our um, office personnel to council mayor, um, most of collaboration is done between our city crew and our city clerk. Um, we have a, a gas company um, in Halleck, so we've got natural gas, and there's other communities down Highway 75, so Halleck, um, Stephen, Argyle, and Debstown of Warren, they all have natural gas business. So we've collaborated um, with each community um, for many years. I think we got our natural gas in 62 and a lot of other communities came in about the same time. So that has tied our communities in um, from that end of it and they work together a lot. Um, if one guy isn't certified for something, another one may have to cover, um, being their smaller departments and they really have a good networking. Um, as far as mayor, I don't get involved in that and it, it works well um, with them basically quite often working with each other. And they also share um, equipment sometimes, maybe not so far south, but um, with some of the communities. Kennedy actually is in between Halleck and Stephen. And we've used other people's equipment and they've used ours. Um, we've gone down and used our street sweeper in, in say in Kennedy. And, and then uh, Lancaster, Minnesota, which is to the northeast of us, um, we've done a little cooperation there, but it seems that um, Highway 75 ties um, our towns together as far as the city maintenance people. The, uh, and what's been done lately as far as, um, I think they had a training for pool certification in Heldon Warren um, not too long ago, and we're trying to bring some of that training into an area like one of the towns would host and uh, rather than travel to longer distances, Detroit Lakes, St. Cloud, Minneapolis, depending on. Um, so they've been utilizing that uh, and improving on it over the time. And our city manager or city clerk, um, we just had one retire, which was 30 years experience. So the collaboration from that level, he, uh, was well experienced. He tapped into other clerks when he was younger, but uh, towards the end, it really got, not the end, but the last many years, that he was a really a good resource person and a real person person. And, and uh, 
was able to share a lot of that experience. So people were, city managers would call him a lot for their communities. Um, and now we just hired a, a young man that, uh, and we've got actually a younger crew. Like I say, we've got city, four city maintenance people. We have, still have our own police department. Um, and that's one thing I've always felt that we want to have our own control of our law enforcement. And we're the county seat for Kitson County. And uh, so we currently have one, had two, and each time it changes, the, uh, the discussion comes up of having the county cover us or whatever. But um, so we have one city policeman. And, uh, and then with the, as far as collaboration of uh, council and mayors, the- uh, Go ahead, 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> well, anyway, so that's less and less, which actually I'm glad I'm, I'm here today. Um, and I thank them for putting this on that we can, uh, get together and, and not only share things up and down on the Minnesota side, but also to uh, <coughs> share across the river because we all have a lot of the same issues. Um, roadblocks, a lot of times is time for us part-time officials as mayor and, and city council. Um, it's tough to decide your meetings and, and uh, things that you have to do where the full-time people um, in their day-to-day -day operation have time to collaborate so and uh, we want to nurture that so uh, untapped potentials I guess you know technology um, could utilize more but then again we have to have the time to uh, to tap into that so otherwise 30 seconds has passed so <laughs> I'll turn it over to Russ. <laughs> thank you Mayor Clay. also want to thank uh, Murado uh, community connects to that and I want to recognize the fellow panelists here today and for sharing and I think that's so important about these meetings is to be able to hear what other communities are doing so we can uh, recognize what's going on out there in regard to best practices and bring that home ourselves. Uh, and, and is anybody from Emirato here? A couple of, I was almost on Emirati and or whatever you call yourself, but <laughs> where uh, when we were going to school in Grand Forks, we looked at a house here. We you know, pretty near bought it, and we ended up finding something in Grand Forks, so we ended up staying over there. So that was almost your neighbor. But uh, anyway, when you look at this stuff, you know, in regard to just recognizing neighbors and and and, uh, and and connecting with other communities, I think it's so important just to recognize the importance of relationship building of being out there and networking at events like this or other events where we go and we have uh, uh, issues that, uh, that are across the lines of, of our communities and shaking hands there and saying, what are you guys doing to do this? How can we partner in order to address this issue? And I think that's, uh, that's at a variety of levels. You know, and uh, we, uh, I'm a little bit different uh, position here than my, my fellow panelists here, and I'm a chairman of a tribal government. And so, uh, and we're recognized as a sovereign nation. And so in that respect, then we can, we have the opportunity to go to uh, the federal government and work with them. And so, but that, the, the relationship building is important there as well. And then we, then we also work with our state officials and our county officials, and then our local officials in regard to uh, try to address our needs here. And I think for the most part, for, I've only been in office about seven months. And for the most part, I've, I've, I've had a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, uh, opportunities to, to do those networking and to work together with those other communities to address our issues at Spirit Lake. And I think for the most part, too, we've been uh, helping out on the other side of the, of the line as well. So I think that's, uh, I think that's so important for the, the community collaboration piece of that. Uh, I heard somebody saying, I think it was uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Mayor Hanneman uh, that talked about uh, communication. And I think uh, internally, we have to, in our communities, we tend to get kind of territorial as well. And we need to bring that down. We can't be working in silos internally, and we can't be, uh, and, and the same thing when we go outside our communities, you know, so uh, we need to open up those lines of communication so we can, we're, we're open to whatever's out there and that we can, so we can utilize that in our community. Uh, infrastructure development, the need for new facilities, our buildings are getting old, you know, in regard to untapped potentials, roads, how can we partner, uh, to make sure that's done, especially in the winter time, uh, where we have existing partnerships now with our county officials in regard to make, just making sure our homes are open. 
I got a painter that I put on here, I put an indoor plumbing. And I don't know if any of you, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm, a, I'm not too old, but uh, we just got a water line to our house here, you know, like a, a, a last year, uh, the rural water line. So we're on a well till then, you know, but the, but the well wasn't all that good. So I think the thing about the, but I know others who, you know, and I remember the days back when I was growing up is that we didn't have indoor plumbing and we didn't have water in our community. So I see a couple of heads nodding and stuff, and so I, maybe some of you remember that as well. But I think that's kind of being addressed. The other part is natural gas, is that we don't, that's, uh, we, were, we were hit pretty hard with that propane shortage just last uh, winter. Us, uh, the reservation community, and those from our surrounding area. You know, for our area, it tapped out at 555 per gallon, and uh, they wouldn't come up for less than 200 gallons. So you need $1,100 just to get a load of propane dropped off. Uh, the other part, you know, I was thinking about this in regard to taxing, and we always hear that, you know, these Indian guys, they don't pay taxes, but we do pay income tax. You know, we pay, when we come off the reservation, because we don't have any stores on our, on our reservation, we come off and our money comes off, and we buy in the surrounding community, especially in Grand Forks here. You know, so uh, Devil's Lake, and we pay taxes there for, for what we buy. So we're paying, we're paying taxes. We might not be on the land, but everything else we do. My wife and I, in our, in our home, we, we pay taxes because we're on fee land, which is on a, still on a reservation, but it's fee land we pay there. So in regard to roadblocks, you know, on a federal level, uh, the sequestration is not helping anybody. Uh, federal deficit that's going on, I think that needs to be addressed. Those guys need to reach across the aisle and address that. Uh, the other part is in regard to economic development. And for us as a tribal community, to build some uh, uh, stores on our on a reservation so we can keep that money there and have that exchange of hands a couple times before it goes off. I see you back here. <laughs> well, thank you. My name is Michael Brown. I have the privilege to be the mayor of Grand Forks and it's been 14 years so I envy you youngsters up here. <laughs> but it, it gets more fun, believe it or not. When I started I was very cynical. I said it was thankless and time consuming. It is, but it's also very rewarding. Public service, I think, it helps us develop who we are and helps our communities develop and what they can be. And Grand Force, I think those who have much, much is expected. And I, I fully believe that it's our job to be a resource for the region and help help out in so many different ways that, as they've come up. And I, I was amazed. It's fun to read these things. You come to these meetings. My staff has a report prepared. And we do that. We do that. We do that. So here I'll tell you what we do. So we had a. Um, Regional Economic Development Corporation, and it's fun working with Klaus Thiessen and Keith Lund. And we make loans available for Grafton, Cavalier, Parker, Repembina. And I think if the region succeeds, we succeed. And so that's why it's so important we'd be available. And we have the uh, Grand Forces, two representatives on the Red River Regional Council, Community Economic Development and Riparian. We have our main partner in Safer Tomorrows, which is a countywide effort to mitigate childhood exposure to violence. We coordinate planning with the county through our extraterritorial zoning. We have the regional landfill service and capacity. We promote a vibrant environment uh, and reason for entertainment and family events, as Susie Alara said, through the Ralph Engelstead. We have July Art Fest races. And when you guys have events involving food, I'm happy to come out. <laughs> Just keep, keep us on your invite list. We work with, with Altru as a regional health center provider. Um, we're enforced to the lead agency for veterans transportation grant. Our transportation department uh, works with regional providers, vehicle repairs for transit vehicles. Um, we do minor repairs on motor vehicles when they come in, and we charge it to ourselves, I guess. We serve as a regional warehouse for material for water break repairs, and our water treatment plant has uh, wastewater and water laboratory services. We provide public health related services, including disaster response, and mosquito control. Our public information center, remember Northwood had their tornado, we were pleased to help in many ways we could. We have the Hazmat Fire Emergency Training Centers, um, mutual aid for East Grand Force, Grand Force Service Base, and Airport Crash Rescue. We have a um, response to the ability to provide response to life threatening fires at the discretion of the fire department officer in charge. Our regional response is directed by North Dakota State Emergency Operations Center for Hazardous Materials. Uh, regional response is directed by North Dakota State Emergency Operations Center for Technical Rescue. Response to vehicle accidents and fires along highways within 15 miles of the city of Grand Forks. Water rescue on the Red River and support the Red uh, River and the County Waste Rescue Team housed in the Grand Forks Sheriff's Department. Countywide fire training at our Public Safety Training Center. Uh, statewide fire training is offered to all, to all fire departments on the road. Um, public fire education safety trailer, um, which 
street dwells with, with simulated burns, deliver stage presentations uh, for an extremely small fee. Um, as materials training is often conducted by members of our fire department, we hosted the North Dakota Association of Arson Investigators annual conference. Um, and partnering with the North Dakota Firefighters Association and officer training in Bismarck, Fargo, and Minot on a monthly schedule of public hearing active video network through our public safety center. So I think we do a lot, and I'm happy that we can, and we can do more. And if we talk about roadblocks, it's let us know what we can do. And we have a tremendous resource in our um, public city officials. I mean, they have a wealth of experience, they've been doing it 30 years. And if we can help in any way, we're happy to do that. And I think communication, as has been said before, is the key to helping us pro provide better regional support and work better as a region. Because I know when people come here, they have quality of life issues. So they want to live in small communities and they want to be part of the communities. And I respect that. I grew up on Air Force bases, which were like five to 10,000 people, and I felt right at home. And so I understand that quality of life and that needing to belong. And so I think our city needs to be responsive to that. And we do have responsibility to provide quality of health care and regional response for technical disasters and stuff. And I'm pleased that my people have the same philosophy I do. We're here to serve and be a resource. Okay, that's it. Next on the uh, Atlanta schedule is, are we, are we changing it on the fly? I'm just afraid you can see it. Yeah, that's how I we may not get that all in, but we'll try. Okay. You can take it out on your streets. Okay. okay. Next on the schedule, we're going to open up the uh, panel for questions from the audience. So, is there uh, another floating mic around here, or is this the only one? Okay, kind of has one. So, whoever's going to ask the question from the audience, raise your hands so we can get you a mic, and then I'll please direct your question to an individual up here and I'll hand them this portable mic. So I'll do the I'll do the table. Who are you addressing the question to? We didn't hear from David. Oh he's he's he only he's a mayor wannabe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's gonna wrap it up at the end. And we also hope maybe we could hear from him. Yeah, and we'll hear from him. Yeah, we don't want to leave her out. Oh, hey, look, I tried to, I tried to get you out of it. Anyway, this question is mostly for the mayors of Halak and Lakota and uh, Cheyenne. Do you find a lot of backlash from the community if you try to consolidate resources? Because I know small communities, they take pride in having the post office, or they take pride in having Oh, we have this in this location, but you know, we've got to move it from Halak to Stephen or Halak to Argyle. Do you find a lot of political backlash when that happens? Is it hard to convince people it's okay? We have to do this to be efficient. Well, it, in Halak, we haven't. We've been fortunate enough to not really have to consolidate a lot um, with different services and whatever. We've been able to maintain um, what we have. Um, <laughs> And I think the collaboration with those other communities, because um, we really don't get involved, um, maybe on a county level, there's more consolidation of things um, and other communities maybe have in the county, but um, we don't really have had to experience, we've had to make cutbacks monetarily, financially, um, on different things, but as far as services, we haven't had to. So. Um, and then as far as dealing with Kennedy, Stephen, Argyle, Warren, we don't really get involved in, that doesn't really affect the other communities or us, what they might do other than regionally. I know uh, in Lakota, we haven't really collaborated as far as resources and, and, and street work and things like that yet with Michigan. Um, like I said, there was a rivalry there and um, I don't know if there always will be or not, but like I said, I, we did the icebreaker like Duck Fest, so now we're working little by little to get together now. So we really haven't collaborated with them a lot as far as resources go right now. As far as collaborating with uh, uh, New Rockford, uh, there's not much going on except we do uh, 
share a lot of ideas about in infrastructure, um, our sewer system. Um, we help each other uh, with problems that we have. This winter we've had a lot of uh, old water pipes freezing up and even the sewer lines, you know, uh, in New Rockford, they, a lot of those froze up. But, um, that's about the extent of, of our collaboration. Uh, our, the school in Cheyenne, all of our students, when we closed the school, went to New Rockford School. So it's, it's now called New Rockford Cheyenne High School and elementary. But, uh, you know, the, the uh, fact that students from around the Cheyenne area are in New Rockford, it's, uh, I can tell uh, that there's, there's more uh, interaction with, with that community than it used to be. Question from the audience. Raise your hand, please. I'll get you the mic. Oh, way in the back. <coughs> While we're going there, change is the most difficult thing I think we face as mayor, whether one way or the other. If it's change, everybody's in your office. Mm -hmm. And whether it's good or bad, you do have to listen and make what you think is the best decision for your community. tremendous with Northrop Grumman uh, does that use enhanced use lease on stuff out there. So you have to be poised for growth and if you're not prepared, like we have to be prepared as a community, we have to build homes or apartments and stuff because when people look to come here, if we don't have housing, we're not on the list. And so we, but how do you do that? There's the risk, there's it's investment and investment implies risk. But I know when I was stationed at the base, we had 10,000 people here and it was just, Embraer was wonderful. We had pizza places over here and nightclubs. And we just, it was nice to get off the base and let your hair grow a little bit. <laughs> but now things are different. So it, it, it's, it's called anticipation, being prepared, um, investing, which involves risk. And I think we expect great things. And I understand in the western part of the state, when they had the boom and bust, now they're very, and now they're finally comfortable that it's, it's going to go, so now they're really starting to invest. And it's going to be the same thing here, because we had the boom and the bust, and now we're, we're expecting it back. And I think. Northrop Grumman and other partners are going to help this be very successful out here. So just wait and see. I think the biggest thing is is everybody get involved. Um, talking about residents and, and people in the community, you know, that as a council and mayor and government entities can only do so much. But um, even with ideas and whatever, but with that growth, um, I think the more people that can get involved. And uh, with ideas and on hand, and, and you know, it's it's a big undertaking. But you know, it's uh, growth. Growth is good. And of course, Western North Dakota, and now working this way, that it came so fast that it's it's, it's hard enough. You know, we want growth in small towns as much as possible. But when it comes that fast, it's just. Uh, and I think probably housing is a big concern in all the communities. Um, I know in Halleck, we had, um, this uh, canola facility was built there, food grade, um, which is employs about 50 people. And early on, it was like housing, it's like, what are we, what are we gonna do? And it, it's worked its, its way through it, but you know, whether it's rental, but it, I think the big thing is, the more people can get involved at any level, um, it helps. And of course, it comes onto the, the city and county government that, uh, has to be there for it to happen too. So, just to follow up on, I just and I think it's our responsibility as uh, as officials to communicate that to our to our uh, community members to get that information out there, so there's an opportunity for them to provide input on what's being developed uh, in, on their behalf. 
have a question for uh, Mayor Brown. Can you, before you leave today, give us some names of contact people in Grand Forks Center Economic Development? Yes. Uh, that we can meet with and talk to I mean, that might help us with some suggestions for the growth? Yeah, Klaus Thiessen and Keith Lund. And you just call the front number and Judith will answer And I can tell them Mayor Brown said. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they expect this call. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is for Mayor Brown and I guess for anybody else on the committee or the panel. Um, in terms of the transportation of, of oil from the Bakken and how it travels from community to community, um, what kind of preparedness is being done? What kind of um, infrastructure is in place to deal with a catastrophe uh, of the nature that happened not too long ago. What kind of assurance can you provide that uh, we're prepared to deal with it? Because it's probably, probably going to happen. Well, it is. It is. It's a matter of time. And so that's why we're looking at with our, with the Congressional uh, Hoven and the Hack Camp and Kramer looking at improving the quality of the cars to carry the oil. And we're looking at the quality of the rails, and I've been part of Chief uh, Pete O'Neill. We're working on panels and training and things like that to ensure what comes through to the community is safe, as safe as it can be. You're right, it, it's a real, and, and pipelines, we have pipelines going under, underground through our cities that are 60 years old, if that's an exaggeration, but they're older and they're going to have problems, so we're anticipating that. 